Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Catholic Dadcast. I am Rich Pintang, your host and founder of the show. And yes, I've come to you at the end of season one. And as the year comes to an end, gosh, how great it feels to have the opportunity to do what I've done this year. You know, so to God be all that glory. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm doing this monologue to, to wrap up season one and, uh, knowing as much as, that I have learned through this process and, um, my personal faith journey, um, I can only be excited about the things that will come before me in the new year. And so I'll, today really is about, uh, just three basic reflections I had in regards to my experience and why I'm so excited about season two. The first reflection that comes to mind is the fact that I sat down towards the end of the year to look at some pictures from beginning of the year all the way until um, December. And it was just amazing to me to see how much God showed up and how blessed I was to to experience what I had with my family, the community, uh, the ups, the the downs, the mountains, the valleys, I mean, all of it. Between um, being so thankful to have these conversations on the podcast and to have wanted to create a ministry that I felt could be uh, uh, a venue in which we touch the heart of men and families and fathers that I know are, are dealing with the struggles that we have here. But I, I can say that uh, through it all, you know, we're, we're never alone. And that's, that's just an amazing thing to reflect on here this, this past year. I'm thankful for the health that, that uh, I've been able to maintain through living an active and healthy lifestyle. So praise God for that. The time that I've spent with my family has been amazing. The business opportunities, I'm grateful for that. I'm um, obviously the daily provisions. Uh, you know, I get a lot of vitamin D out here in Southern California, and um, let's just say that um, sometimes we we can probably take things for granted. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I, I live very grateful for uh, for everything that I've I've been given, all the responsibilities, all the challenges. Um, I will I will always give it up to the Lord. The second reflection I have for you that comes to mind was the fact that I look back at the pictures of the things that transpired over this this past year. And for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, I mean, I have a, a list of things that I had um, reflected on and had been a part of um, over the you know past 12 months. And I can say that, you know, without without God's, you know, divine providence, I would have never been able to experience these things. And um, this is not, you know, about being boastful. It's just a matter of allowing myself to truly surrender and allow God to use me as an instrument to further the evangelization of, of Christian men alike. And lot there was so much to learn i mean you know one of the probably one of the most i would say significant um occurrences was to suffer a loss in our family and um it stops you i mean it, it stops you in your tracks and uh I, I can say that you know um for the you know the time that i spent with my cousin eric before he passed um, from continued health issues, I I can look at how he in itself was a miracle in my life. Uh, a strong motivator, you know, someone that I considered a part of my inner circle. For those of you guys that know me on a very personal level, you you know that I I I I keep my I keep my circle tight. Um, 
tighter than even what you, you would see typically in social media or, or in the community or what have you. But, you know, I, I genuinely get um, so much from the connections that I make. And that, like I said, it's a, it's definitely a learning experience. And um, one of the hardest parts was to say goodbye um, at the funeral. Um, but the other side of that was to know that I've I've gotten so much from being able to have that relationship with him so much as to, to have been, you know, seen um, so much of Jesus in him and to have been able to suffer with the family grieve, but to also celebrate his life because we would not all be the same without the efforts he put into having a relationship with us. And so, you know, rest in peace, brother. Uh, I, I miss you. And uh, just just know that, um, let's just say that there's those of us here that you know you've impacted and your legacy will live on through us. The other parts of the learning process has been the connections I've made with, um, you know, men that are uh, specifically in uh, a lot of the different ministries that, that I'm a part of. Um, you know, between um, Men Awaken, between TMIY, between the uh, the Filipino ministry and and just everything we do for the church, I think ultimately, you know, we we are the living and breathing Jesus. You know, and so that's that's why um, being able to to be with men, you know, men in my my dad's mastermind, you know, we we struggle together, but we're not alone. And I think that's my message for you as far as learning is concerned is, you know, you're going to grow through a lot of the adversity and stretching yourself out of your comfort zone. If you find yourself in a very comfortable place right now, I would tell you that uh, this man here is, is trying to spark something in you uh, because as Catholic men, um, this is not a time to be passive. This is where we, we need to engage because we're, we're no longer living in a godly world. We're, we're living in a world that is directly attacking the family, the family unit, uh, suppressing the leadership in men that, that quite frankly, the, the men that have been such poor examples um, of how we should live um, is partly why we are in the predicament we are where we're pushing God out of society when in reality, he's the answer. Jesus is the answer for all that. But I would, t like I said, I would tell you that um, there's so much, there's so much to learn. And um, I, I'm, I'm just so thankful for the people that have stuck with me, that have um, allowed me to grow as an individual, as a, a man of God. The last thing I would leave you is, uh, is my faith journey um, in regards to, especially here at, you know, the beginning of the year, you know, um, 2022 is here, you know, and regardless of what everyone has, has gone through, I I'm here to tell you that I I'm excited for what's, what's ahead. Yes. There's volatility and uncertainty and there's chaos and there's ambiguity, right? That's, that's the world we live in. But one thing I, I have always known is I can always find peace in the Lord. Peace be with you. And that's, that's really why, uh, you know, it's so important in, in terms of our faith journey that we make these resolutions to, yes, put bad habits aside, but replace them with healthy, good habits. One that's not going to give us happiness, but one that's going to give us more holiness. I mean, how powerful is that? Just to, and, and I'm not talking about, you know, building a church or I'm saying one extra day of Mass one extra prayer in the morning and the evening, maybe adding the rosary to your regiment, modeling the behavior that we want our children to have. That's what I'm talking about. Embracing the opportunity to go to confession once or twice a month, doing that with your significant other. I mean, one of the, one of the, the amazing ways I was able to finish off 
2021 was by going to daily mass with my wife. I mean, that, that in itself was just amazing to have that retreat of starting the day off. And by far, if I could inject that, if my schedule would permit it, um, that we go together, I mean, I can, I can tell you that you'll find a lot of healing and clarity in it. And in a world that's, that's so, has so much gray area, pushing and pulling, you can truly find uh, so much peace in the Lord. And, and, you know, like I said, as, as season one comes to an end, season two is just going to have so much, I have so many, so many things lined up. I feel God calling me to share this with all of, all of you guys. And I'm thankful that you guys have um, shown so much support. I would leave you with this verse. It's Proverbs 16, 3. And it reads, Entrust your works to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. It's so short. It's concise. And truly, as we see in the divine mercy, we say, Jesus, I trust in you. But do we really? Do we really trust Jesus? So today, be a true Catholic leader. Don't be the hypocrite that we see in the in Scripture. Be an authentic man. Show the zeal for the Lord. Serve with a grateful heart. And allow just allow men to ride with you. Lock arms with them. And it's just a ripple effect. That's what I could tell you. One foot in front of the other. And regardless of any hardships you guys might be going through, God will never abandon us. We will always be indebted by that cross. So celebrate it. So God bless you guys. Again, season two is in the works. Thank you for sharing the show with your friends and family. And I'm wishing you all a holy new year. To God be all the glory.